So hi everyone. So I think everyone is at home. I'm actually in a rented home as I quarantine from the New York uh, fleeing. I was in New York until two weeks ago and my husband is Canadian, decided to come to Canada as the borders were closing and going back to Brazil was not uh, actually an option given our president's uh, perspectives, but also you know the hope that we can come back to New York before the, the end of my uh, fellowship at the Institute of Latin American Studies at Columbia University. So we're here all struggling with homeschooling, with you know dealing with our uh, daily lives work, but also with this anxiety of what's coming next. So my organization, the Garapé Institute, is pretty much involved in several fronts and different levels of uh, trying to do our bit uh, in responding to this crisis. So the country we're directly uh, trying to help is Brazil, I'm Brazilian, and we're just uh, teaming up in a task force for Rio de Janeiro, but also for responding for civil society task force in Brazil. Uh, in Rio, we're trying to actually uh, call attention and get supplies to uh, public security and prison agents and inmates, uh, given you know the, the say the vulnerabilities uh, of these first responders and also of these people that are you know without their freedom. Uh, it's been really worrying because the lack of cooperation, uh, you know, from the federal level to the state and municipal levels is quite, uh, I would say, staggering. Uh, one would know that this would be difficult, but I could never think that the response to the crisis in a country such as Brazil that put back, you know, just looking back, there's so many amazing opportunities and things we've done as a country. And to see what's going on right now is so worrying and so frustrating. So we're trying to do our best uh, uh, as a civil society organization, as citizens, uh, to answer, for example, uh, not only to the health side and to the favela dweller sides, but also for the public security sides. Uh, this is called Union Rio, a real union. It's a civil society task force that is mobilizing there. We're linked to civil society task forces in other states of Brazil, and obviously trying to influence in some ways uh, the federal response uh, that has been pretty grim uh, in terms of leadership and role model. Uh, which is so much needed at this moment. So my real concern is, of course, uh, uh, on the lack of coordination will bring uh, a lot of suffering to our people. Uh, I'm very concerned about the vulnerable populations, be the inhabitants of favela. How can they self-isolate, uh, given that this, uh, you know, the the inhabitants they live in, in very packed homes? Uh, it's very hard to think about. The, the hygiene and, and all the measures that we're, we're uh, preaching as uh, uh, being so important to prevent the crisis, but also the vulnerable populations, for example, in prisons. Brazil has the third prison population in the world in subhuman uh, conditions. The agents that interact with this population on a day-to-day -day basis as well is of our great concern. So apart from that, Definitely the question of uh, economic uh, economics and how the government is actually being very slow in responding to the basic needs of the people. And uh, we know by our own experience and by other uh, you know, previous examples in history that the lack of livelihoods could lead for serious social unrest. So we're already monitoring, for example, uh, uh, where these hotspots for civil unrest could happen. We're in dialogue with the World Bank to see if we can do this in a, a, a more, I would say, worldwide basis uh, to be able to respond not only with health, but also with economic um, responses and subsidies and, and income for the people that are in severe needs. And I think also, you know, the crisis, of course, demands that we look for the emergency, but we need to look into the future. What will the world, what will the world like, uh, look like uh, in, you know, 12, 18, 24, 36 months from now? I do believe this will be a different world. I think this is a moment where I have the opportunity to rethink about priorities, about the way of living, about how do we want actually to use this 
I would say, critical and scaring moment to address the needs of the, the next generations. So many questions keep coming to my mind regarding the global commons, public health, the environment, the digital domain, uh, war and peace, the civic space and democracy. And I think we should use this quarantine time to think very hard on where we want to put our energy, our beliefs and our work power uh, in the next years to make sure we get this opportunity to sustain and actually to implement the UN, uh, for example, the UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals, to use this as a platform to reboot and just restart another model of cooperation where government, civil society, private sector, the media, all of us have a role in having just a, a better future. Just coming back to me, uh, actually a book launch that I was uh, in New York on uh, by Christiana Figueres, uh, just uh, a quarantine uh, uh, must read is like the future we choose. So I think we really should think hard about what's the future we're gonna choose after this moment where we were forced to stop, where time and control were just totally stripped from our hands. I hope you're all keeping safe, but all using uh, this time to, to think about what can we do best and how can we as citizens, as actors in whichever sector we are, uh, can be the, the force uh, behind the transformation we need to see and that we want to lead. So wishing all my best to all of you.